One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit. Oh, we're in rare form today. All right. And this one reveals... Oh, I sees of a CMOS nature, I'm guessing. What have we got? CD... Probably should get a bit closer, but let's see what we can read. We've got CD 4536BE. No idea what that is. <laughs> um, I'll put it up here. Um, sometimes I order these things late at night. I'm telling you, I really don't know what they are or why I ordered them. I only thing I can say in my defence is that I've been building up you know, all these uh, different chips that you can get because it's so much fun playing with them. Uh, whatever they do, whether they be, you know, AND gates or NOR gates or counters or multiplexes or whatever, there's always fun. And what I'm really looking forward to doing, uh, as I have done a little bit, is to combine more than uh, one. Uh, so this one, a bit of a mystery, but I'll put it up here as to what it is and, uh, yeah, look forward to playing with it. Hmm, light guy. Let's see what is inside. We have packets of, many packets of, is that it? What is it? Many packets of different things. So that looks like an STM32, the famous blue pill. Uh, and I've just been buying bits and pieces of these because, honestly, these chips, these STM32s, are really hard to find. But for some reason, I can't fathom, you can still get blue pills. And these guys look like some sort of temperature monitor. Uh, so I'll just dive into my um, account on AliExpress and see what on earth I ordered. Um, yeah, let's get a little bit closer as well. Yep, on the blue pill here, we've got the STM32F103C. 8T6, and I particularly get the C8T6 as opposed to the 6T6 so that I can take these chips off and use them to make uh, product programmers because why wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> and uh, and this guy here, yeah, this is a humidity sensor, so I squared C humidity sensor, so we'll get that one hooked up at some stage and uh, and see what sort of values we can get out of that as well. Probably for the ongoing long-suffering hothouse project um, where you know knowing the humidity is a is a good thing oh stand back this is a, this is a pretty good one a box okay two boxes interesting what could be in two boxes these are pretty light too um, Two of something the same, probably. And that something is... Solar panel. Hmm. Okay. Nice looking solar panel. That comes with a little bit of cord. No indication of what the... Um, voltages but um we'd have a connector here so we could i guess we could connect it up and see although the sun's disappeared for the day so i'm assuming this one is the same and i think this might have a little bit to do with my desire to automate the hothouse a little bit not quite great spot style but uh, at least to a point where i can run a few lights and maybe open a valve to let some water gravity feed the plants, that sort of thing. So you don't need too much for that. A couple of solar panels. Um, yeah, gosh, that's interesting. I don't know if you can pick up the patterns there in some of these cells. So if you look at this one, for instance, it's got some patterns here and this one not. So does that indicate maybe breakages in the crystals? Um, it is a bit bowed. Well, we'll uh, when the sun's out, we'll plug them in and uh, and see what they produce. But I'm going to guess 12 volts, 
and uh, yeah, I might have to strip these back so I can uh, plug these in and find out uh, what sort of current we can get out of them on a good day. Right. Let's see what this one reveals. A package from the package. How unusual. Oh, and it is a, another headset. So yes, so impressed was I by my first headset, which I've featured before, that I bought a backup one. One for home, one for work. These are pretty good and they work well. Nice one. Okie dokie. And we have, hmm, interesting. We have We Act Studio, ah, CH552 boards. Yes, have been playing a lot with these little lovelies lately. And um, this is just a convenient way of getting access to the CH552 chip. I mean, you can, um, if you like, um, pretty much just grab the chip itself with a couple of extra components and you are good to go. Uh, as you can see, there's not an awful lot on the board, and that's because most of the gear is uh, is inside the chip. Um, so it's just an external crystal and a few resistors here for your uh, mini USB coming in, a couple of buttons, and uh, you are good to go. These are very, very nice uh, chips and a nice little development board to have a play with them. Quite a light little guy. And inside a couple of RGBs. So not the same size. These look like almost 5050 size. And these are listed as 8050s. So yeah, pretty similar to their 0603 cousins that we've seen recently. Uh, might as well grab this one because it'll be easier to test. Doesn't say whether it's common anode or common cathode. Um, it says, does it say on one? Yeah, or 100. 12. Ah, so I think this might be 1206 RGB, and that is 100 pieces. All right, let's see if we can get some action out of them. Hmm, so five volts coming in to the common anode via a 220 ohm resistor. This, <laughs> what a what a mashup, um, but pretty much the only way that I could connect it up, I think, uh, under the circumstances. So yeah, just a little test bed here to see if these things work as advertised. So let's just try it. So yep, that's good. It's a bit of a lottery here, which one is which? Let's try, so it's blue is five, um, green is seven, and green is also eight, of course, because of my soldering. <laughs> and then on the other side, is there a red to be had? Yes, two is red. So, yeah, I mean, I think there'll be some uses for that little thing. Uh, probably in PCBs that I've designed where they just solder on a little bit easier than, than this. Um, but, yeah, very low power requirements at 0603, but um, pretty powerful, really, a 220-ohm resistor. And that's not a bad light coming out of that. Uh, drawing about um, four milliamps at this stage. Yeah, nice one. I'm gonna go with common anode again, which I think via this 220 ohm resistor is eight. So that's five volts coming in. And then we've got blue, red, and I think think over the other side yeah green nice so yeah 1206s 805s and 603s lovely a box a box what's in the box hmm it's heavy i think this is hmm i think this is pcbs uh, because, wow, there's a few more than I expected, uh, because I'm looking at doing something with the Padux and the Stable Jewel Thief, and it says Padux on it. Nice. Okay. 
So I think I made two of these. And one was a through-hole version, and one was an SMD version. Uh, that's obviously through-hole all the way. What if that means the SMD version is still coming? So, hmm, all right, so what have we got? Well, I'll break one of these off and get a bit closer, and I'll show you what my thought process is on this one. A couple of brave late-night choices in this design. Uh, and whether it works or not uh, remains to be seen. But the first one is that it's based around the Paduk. And you can tell it because VCC is on pin 1 and ground on pin 8, whereas the AVRs are generally, we've got VCC on pin 8 and ground on pin 4. I've also made this a curious mixture of through-hole and SMD. So the Zena, the shot key. Uh, the capacitor here between ground and VCC all are SMD, and uh, but then you've got some through-hole components like, for instance, this capacitor here, the 47 microfarad capacitor, the inductor, and this is also curious here. The QX5252, which we've seen quite a few times before, is uh, is in SOT235 format, not the TO92. And the reason for that is there's an extra pin here, which I think is called LS. I'd have to check the um, the data sheet again. But basically that allows you to either make decisions on the basis of the light coming in on the solar panel, or in fact uh, select it to be low, and, uh, and then it would be uh, working the whole time, drawing from the battery uh, the whole time. So yeah, interesting here that um, this via the selector will allow me to build projects which even uh, during the day when this um, light available on the solar panel or not doesn't matter, uh, this circuit will keep working. Whereas a traditional solar uh, project uh, goes on at night time and stops during the day. So yeah, as I said, brave choices, a um, bit of a brave new world. So I'm going to, um, only going to really find out if this whole design works when I sold one up and try it but yeah looking forward to that that is the mailbag for the week and uh, we'll catch you next time see ya